Assalamu alaikum. Good morning everybody. How are you all? How are my little fair ladies and my little fair men? Yes, and the cousins and friends all set for a story with a smoothie or a milkshake or cookies and milk, right? Like lovely children. Come one, come all, do call everyone. It's so much fun listening to a story, isn't it? What a beautiful way to start your Sunday. Well, for me, it's the favorite way right from when I was a little, little one, like three to four year old, right? So let's get started. Like you must have seen on the posters, today is story is about very respectable, very honorable and one of the best women in our history and that is Hazrat Khadija alayhi mm. So you all know Hazrat Khadija, I can see bright eyes shining with dancers. Yes, she is Prophet's first wife, Hazrat Khadija binti Khalid. Yes. Now, she was a very, very intelligent, very respectable, very decent, very brave and a smart lady. She inherited a lot of wealth from her father and from her ex-husbands. Right? So she was a widow and she had a lot of wealth, but she did not sit down. Imagine 1400 years ago, 14, 1400 years ago, she managed she, her trade, her business. She would trade silks and fabrics and furniture. So she had that acumen, that skill, that wisdom. Yes, and she added and she, um, and she raised profits for her business. So she was looked up and respected by everybody in Mecca. She was born in Mecca in 515. And um, she had uh, lots of brothers and sisters, but she was the youngest and she took over the business and ran the business, right? And she was, so everybody wanted to do business with her or marry her or, you know, be her employee or, or her friend. But she was very selective, very wise and very sensible. She was known as the Princess of Arabia because she was very rich. Wealthy means rich, yes. She was very prosperous. And then she ran her own business and she was very independent and brave. So she, she became very famous because of that, because in those days women were not encouraged to do all that. But if she had the skills and the intelligence, she was doing it. And she was doing very well in the man's world. Mm. Then uh, she was looking for a very honest and a very intelligent person who could manage her trade because she traded to Syria, right? And uh, so she was told by Hazrat Abu, uh, Hazrat Abu Talib, who was a prophet's uncle, paternal uncle, and uh, he was advised by her to hire Muhammad. And she had heard his reputation that he was very honest. He was a very honest, earnest, hardworking, intelligent man. Hello, hello, Bela Raza. How are you? How are you? Imagine, so she had heard his reputation. So on Hazrat Abu Talib's recommendation, she hired Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was just 25 years old. Imagine, I mean, uh, at the age of 25, he also had such a reputation. So she hired him and sent him with all her uh, goods and all to Syria. And it was a long journey. 
and she trusted him. And when he came back, since she had sent her uh, 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 servant, uh, uh, a good servant with him to help him, Mesera, and he brought the stories how wisely he had sold with so much profit and how sensibly he had bought goods there which would, could be sold back home. So he brought, I mean, he, uh, she had never made such an amount of profit earlier, which Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made for her. And she was really impressed. Now, since they were revered and respected by everybody, then people thought that though Prophet Muhammad is sallallahu is only 25 and she's 40, but they are such intelligent and respectable and honorable and brave people. Why don't we suggest to bring them together? So this was suggested. And when Hazrat Khadija met Hazrat Muhammad, she really was very, very impressed. She really liked him. She, and then she sent a proposal to him that if he would like to marry her, if he would accept her hand in marriage, Hazrat Muhammad was delighted. All he wanted was somebody who would be a companion, a wise companion and uh, somebody he could share his thoughts and his, dis you know, the stirrings that were going on, the thoughts he was having, the restlessness he was having inside him. So they got married at the age of 40 and 15 and they were very happy because Hazrat Khadija was a very sensible, very devoted and very, though she came from a very rich family and Hazrat Muhammad was not that very rich, but she, she looked after him, attended to him and was a wonderful, sensible companion to him. So they were like friends all the time and they would discuss all and they spent 15 years together and she always supported Hazrat Muhammad. But then Hazrat Muhammad, before the age of 40, started meditating. He would go up, you know, Ghar Hira, Cave of Hira, yes, yes, absolutely. Good children. And they, uh, they, he would sit and meditate and wonder about the Creator who could be the powerful, the all knowing Creator who could have created this world with sun, moon, stars, sky, heavens, earth, mountains, rivers. So he was really getting restless and wanted to understand the world, the creation, the divine forces who was all behind this. And then, and she supported him because he had to spend time there. She would let him rest in the day and she would run the business so she could financially support him. So this is how it went on. But then one day at the age of 40, at the age of 40, he, when he was in Ghare Hira, what he received was an angel, Gabriel, J. Jibrail, and he came to her and he gave his respects to Hazrat Muhammad and told, gave him and revealed to him that he had been chosen. He had been chosen as a prophet for the mankind. Hazrat Muhammad was shocked, surprised. He could not believe it. He was fearful because it was a huge, huge responsibility. And uh, he had never seen an angel before like that. So, and uh, he came running, shivering back to home. And then the only person he spoke to was Hazrat Khadija because he knew he could trust her advice and her and her wisdom. So that's what she, he did. And she was there, tall and supportive, like a mountain. And she, she said, you don't have to worry. And this, you don't have to be fearful. You deserve to be a prophet. You are honest. You are hardworking. You're courageous. You help people. You help poor people. You're very kind. You're kind to orphans. You are never, you are never um, unjust. 
You've never been unjust to anybody. You've never been unfair. You have all the qualities. So why shouldn't you be a prophet? Don't worry. Everything will settle down and Allah will help you. God will help you every step of the way. I, and I, I, I believe you what you're saying. You are not, you have not gone insane like people said about Astaghfirullah, about Rasulullah. Yes, and our Prophet Muhammad. And then, she supported him and it and she covered him with a blanket because he was feverish and fearful. It was a phenomenal experience for him receiving a message from Almighty God and uh, through an angel. And then he felt a little settled. And then Hazrat Ali, uh, his nephew, was the next one who also supported Hazrat Khadija very much and supported her and respected her and loved her as his mother. And he was just 14 or 15 years old, so he also uh, uh, believed in Hazrat Muhammad's message and con was converted to Islam, right? Monotheism, believing in one God. Yes, Wahid, absolutely. So then what happened was she supported him. And after some time, she told him that he could dedicate and devote all his time and energies towards spreading Islam because that's what Prophet's work is and that's what God wanted him to. And she says, my wealth and my life is devoted to you and your religion. I'll help you. You go ahead. You spend your time reaching out to children. Give them this wonderful message of Islam. Convert them. Help them as God wants you to do and I'll help you finance you so she brought in all the money running you know but do you know why she was also respected so much because even before marriage she always fed poor people she always was very kind to orphans just like Hazrat Muhammad and she carried the same tradition as Muhammad did, Hazrat Muhammad did, so did she. Chote, chote, small children who were orphans, she would give them shelter and food. Poor people would be fed by her and then she supported whatever money was required by Prophet to travel to, uh, you know, to reach out people. She did all that and she supported him. She didn't care how she was living. She did not care because she was used to wealth and prosperity and lavish living, but she gave it all up for Prophet Muhammad and the cause of Islam. So we are very grateful to her. She's the first lady to convert to Islam and that's why she was also because she gave all her wealth, everything to Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and, and to the a cause of Islam to the spreading of Islam and helping other followers and that's how it was and then she, she was given the name of Umul Mumineen and can you imagine Allah sent a special message to Hasid Muhammad telling him that she will be the one of the foremost women to go to paradise. She was so happy to hear that. She was so grateful and she was more humbled by this. She was more and more humbled by this. What a gracious, what a graceful, what a great woman she was. Hmm. And then, guess, and then she supported him, but then Quraysh, the tribe, who were the merchants, they, they really felt threatened, so they um, kind of um, harassed Hazrat Muhammad and his family and his followers and even his uncle and they were sent, they were imprisoned in Shabi Abi Talib. Hazrat uh, Khadija who was not used to and she was not from his tribe, she, she was not sent in exile to Shabi Abi Talib but um, uh, she supported and she went all the way and she worked very hard looking after people over there, attending to Hazrat Muhammad and in such when they do, didn't have food for days, they didn't have enough water to drink, they would eat leaves at times and that played kind of havoc, that played havoc with her health also but she never gave up and everybody loved her, the Umul Mumineen and also all pure she was given the title of all pure she was she was beautiful she was she was a vibrant woman a devoted intelligent hard working kind 
humble lady and she devoted her life but it took its toll because they had to starve for days and it was very difficult to live in that narrowest valley shabia bitaleb with such difficulties with starvation and hard work she became weak and weak right and by the time they came out of shabia bitaleb she had become very weak and ill right and so unfortunately unfortunately she passed away at the age of 65 this was about 3 years before the hijra to madina right and the same year hazrat abu talib also uh, hazrat muhammad's uncle died so hazrat muhammad was very very sad full of sorrow because she was his companion his friend his supporter his financer his counsel everything and he really missed her and prayed for her and he called that jail when he lost his uncle and his wife lost them the year, that year was named as um month of sorrow month of the year of sorrow i'm so sorry a uh, year of sorrow and uh, he was very sad and uh, he had not married anybody else as long he was married to hazrat khadija for 25 years and she had, they had a beautiful life together because they were most beautiful most perfect people on this earth ever and this is the story so we can learn that how from hazrat khadija we can learn so much about honesty humility intelligence wisdom strength independence courage right service kindness so much of social work she did unbelievable and this was mind you 1400 years back so we should remember her and be proud of her and follow her footsteps so hazrat khadija alayhi salam um al mu'minin all pure was one of the most wonderful and the first woman who was converted to islam i hope you learned something and you'll remember hazrat khadija right and feel proud of your um first wife of hazrat muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam i thought I must share this story with you. I hope, and you can tell your moms and dads when they tell you a story or they are telling you something. You can share this story with them, isn't it? Right. So she is buried in Mecca, and she died in the month of Ramadan. Right. So I think that's a good time spent, isn't it? All right. Now I have a small story from Enid Blyton. for you right i thought you would enjoy that also so lot of learning and wonder from this story and now lot of fun from nid blighton's short story and the name of the story is the sparrow children the sparrow children you know what sparrows are small brown little birds right do you feed them outside with water you must especially in summers Once in the very cold weather the young sparrows could not get enough to eat they were not yet a year old so it was a cold weather just like we are about to begin with in fact we have begun with a cold weather and the sparrows could not get enough to eat they were not yet a year old they were very young right and they were not as clever as the older sparrows at finding seeds and bits and scraps and they were not as smart as their parents or their uncles and aunts or their elder brothers or sisters who could hunt and find food and what would they eat seeds and bits and scraps we'll go to our fathers and mothers who had who fed us in the last year and see if they'll help us said we get a big young sparrow we'll go to our fathers and mothers who fed us in the nest huh last year and if see if they'll help us so they flew off to where the older sparrow sat 
on the barn roof waiting for the farm hens to be fed. So they flew off to where the old sparrow sat. Then there was a chance of flying down and stealing a few grains of corn. Ah, there you are, our fathers and mothers, said Taylor, a tiny sparrow. Mother, don't you remember me? Oh, the big brown sparrow he spoke to, he spoke to, looked at him in surprise. Oh, you are the naughty little sparrow that would keep trying to fly from the nest before you were allowed to, she said. Yes, I do believe you are. What do you want? Please, mother, we young sparrows are getting more and more hungry in this foresty weather. And in this forest and this frosty weather, said Taylor. We want you to give us food as you used to when we were first out the nest. Good gracious, we can't do that now that you're nearly a year old, said the old sparrow. You must look after yourself. The young sparrows chittered. They were sad and disappointed. Now what were they to do? A small granny who was running by stopped when he saw the unhappy sparrows. What's the matter? he said. They told him. He nodded his head. Many people are hungry now, he said, as well as birds. But I'm very lucky and have plenty of food stored away, enough to share with you if you like. Oh, you're so kind, cried the sparrows. May we come now? Yes, said the brownie. You may come once a day at dinner time. I'll cook enough potatoes in the skins for all of us and I'll bake enough bread for us all to come along. What a kind fellow. Oh, how sweet. So here is... The Mr. Brownie and the sparrows are having fun. Oh. Okay, you may. Okay, they flew onto his small shoulders and onto his red capped head, chirping, chattering, chattering gaily, happily, happily. Choo -choo 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 -choo. He took them to a. Small house set right underneath a bramble bush, so well hidden that nobody could see it if they passed by. So he had a small hut hidden behind a bramble bush, so nobody would even notice if they went past. Isn't that amazing? Mmm, smart, smart brownie. He took them to a small house. Now, said the brownie, brownie getting some hot potatoes out of the oven. Here we are, potatoes, potatoes for everyone. He looked around his room. There was only one chair. He pointed to his bookcase and the sofa. The boys, sparrows can sit on the bookcase and the girls on the sofa back. He said, oh, but dear me, you, look all, you all look exactly alike to me. You all look the same. I don't know which ones are boys and which ones are girls. However, am I going to tell one from another? Uh, I'm a brown, I'm I'm a boy sparrow," said Taylor, sitting on the bookcase. "And Beaky's a boy sparrow too, but Toppy, Flick, Feathers, and Fluff are girl sparrows. All the rest are boys." The brownie stared at them. "I shall never know which is which," he said. "And I do want to know you all properly. Hmm. I know I give the boy sparrows little black bibs to wear." That will always show me which are the boys. Now, now this brownie is not only kind-hearted and generous and big-hearted, but he's also very smart. He said, I want to know you as people and I, I want to get to know you. You're my friends. So I, I'll make the boys wear black aprons, so bibs, so I can mm, recognize you. He took eight little black bibs from a drawer and put them on the boys' sparrows. Here you can see. There you are. Can you see? These are the boys. He put them, made them sit on the top of the bookcase and they're wearing bibs, black. So they are the boys and these are the young ladies, the girls' sparrows. Yes, and they're sitting on the sofa back. Okay.
The boys were delighted to wear the bibs. They really did feel grand. The girls wanted them too. But Brownie shook his head. No, he said, if you all wear black bibs, I'll be just as much confused, muddled as before. He gave each sparrow some potato and a handful of crumbs. They were so hungry that they gobbled them up. Mum, 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 mum. They, just with the little, little beaks, they gobbled them, swallowed them because they were so hungry. Can we keep our black bibs on? begged the boy sparrows when they were, had finished. We do feel so grand in them. If you like, said the brownie, smiling. They did look so funny with the bibs on. <laughs> I think they look cute. So they all flew off and the boy sparrows showed their new bibs very proudly to everyone. Look at them feeling so happy, so well fed, thanks to Brownie and the bibs. Ah, it's cute. They feel dressed up. Hmm? Each day they flew to the brownies and each day he fed them until the warm weather came. Now, he said, summer is here, you can feed yourself. He said, but come again next year, as many of you as you like, and I'll help you. But in return, please bring me as much thistle down as you can in the autumn, because I need plenty for my eider downs and cushions. So he needed that cotton wool for his eider down is a bedspread and cushions. Just that's the only favor he asked to bring it in autumn because it's picked in autumn. And it's called thistle down. So in the autumn, the sparrows hunted for thistle down for the brownie. And in the cold New Year weather, he fed them with all kinds of food. What a lovely fellow. And they wore the bibs and still do. You don't believe it. Look at them. Aren't they cute? Yeah. And they wore the bibs and still you don't believe. Well, please look carefully at all the sparrows. You see those that have black bibs under the chins are the boy sparrows. And those that have no bibs are the girls. The boy sparrows always begin to wear them in the new year. So you will see plenty of them. And now you will always know cock. And hence, that was when you see them, won't you? Yes. So I thought you would enjoy this kind of information about these little, little sparrows. Make sure you feed them with grains and water. Isn't that lovely to share a little bit with them? Sometimes they don't find food, right? And, so, and the right kind of food. And what do you know? So maybe once a day, if you feed them, that'll be splendid. You might make friends with them, isn't it? So lovely seeing you all today. Um, I hope you enjoyed Hazrat Khadija's story. And I just wanted to wrap it up with a little story about little sparrows for you little fellows, little ladies. How are your studies going? And how are you faring with homework and tests, right? And are you being good to your parents, listening to them, not answering back, keeping your room tidy? Are you doing that? Yes. Or making sure that you get it done and it will be a great help, a great peace of mind for your mom. Always get her a glass of water when she needs it, isn't it? Yes. We should always be grateful for being blessed with such wonderful parents, wonderful homes and lovely lives. We should be thankful for that. Enjoy your Sunday, play games, do your homework. Yes, eat well, sleep well and don't forget reading your story or listening to my stories at the click of a button. And don't forget to tell your older cousins or siblings or friends if they need tuitions from all levels till grade 5, from grade 5 to all levels for literature and English language only. And I'm here at your service. Okay, lovely to see you. Bye-bye. Khudafiz. -bye.